getting started today in my new journal from Lake Michigan Book Press. Notice the, the cover and the binding. She makes these by hand and they are just fabulous. So these are my first two that I have in the square format, which is my favorite to work in. So I'm excited to do my very first page here with you today uh, in my journal. And this page project is titled Sweet Spring. And we're going to celebrate spring. And if you're celebrating Easter, this is just part of that. So I'm beginning with art graph sticks and just choosing a couple of colors. If you don't have these, use a china marker or pencils or um, colored pencils. You could use a ballpoint pen would be nice in this background and I'm loosely going to lay in the shape of, of a nest. Keeping my hand very light and the marks very light and loose. While you're doing this, think of twigs and grasses and string and little pieces of yarn and uh, that's how I created this background here. I've added just a bit of darker uh, coloring in the center uh, just to add a little depth to this to this nest but I'm using two or three different colors here uh, an ochre and a brown and a, a bone black Again, the options are open for whatever colors you want to use or whatever supplies here. Now that I've got this laid in, uh, you can use a brush or any kind of uh, palette, paddle knife. Um, I'm going to use a rubber rubber here and then um, I've got some quinacridone magenta and some nickel azo gold and I think I'm going to go with the gold here and just do some sweeping strokes again with brush whatever you have handy some sweeping strokes to lay in a base of brown color a nice reddish deep brown here and just lose, have fun with this. This is supposed to be really fun. And I love that you can make lots of these from this lesson. I may do an entire series of nests. The inspiration for this came from the picture I'm sharing on Instagram with the, with the picture of the finished nest. From a walk yesterday, I found uh, the first discarded robin's egg in my yard yesterday and took photos of it and that gave me the the idea and the inspiration for today's journal page so exciting fun just swirling this color around the edge again very loosely I don't want this to get rigid in any way Now coming in with some gray. I've just got a mix of gray and white and uh, even smeared in there with a little of the Nicolazo gold to make a nice mix to fill in some of the, the larger white areas on the nest. love working loosely
let that dry just a bit for a couple of minutes. I did, and now uh, I've got some green gold and some diarolite yellow. And I'm just going to dab in some bits of color. I think I've got a just a flat square brush there. I'm picking up a little color. My brush is damp, so I'm not getting a thick, thick, uh, opaque paint on this. I wanted a little transparency to it. And notice how light the strokes are here. Really keeping it light and loose. Scoot your hand back toward the end of your brush. Don't hold it like a pencil or try try not to hold it like a pencil. Um, loosen it up and move your move your grip back toward the toward the end. This, these are very light strokes, just patting and tapping. I noticed the light isn't so good on this video and I couldn't really correct that after I was done, so I apologize. It's been overcast and stormy here, so getting the correct lighting inside has been really a challenge, but I think you can see uh, enough to work. I did take photos of the journal outside, so you can zoom in on those photos and see a little closer. Now I've got my Karen Dash crayons and I've just chosen a few different colors. You could use regular Crayolas. Um, you could add marks with jelly roll pens. Just make sure your work is dry if you're using other pens or markers. Uh, mine I think is still wet here, but that's okay with the, uh, with the Karen Dash. So I'm just doing again very loose, loose mark making. Twirling my, my crayon in my hand as I add the marks to keep them uh, more random and kind of wonky. <laughs> wonky, my favorite word. Um, but just add those as little details around the edge if you like. Now I've got that quinacridone magenta, and I've got a round brush here. I'm adding a little water to get a looser, lighter, uh, transparent color here. And I'm just going to reach in and add some of this beautiful magenta around the nest. So vibrant, and later, um, after the video, I added just a smidge of a fluorescent magenta on top of the quinacridone magenta. So you can do that to yours if you want to. It was just a spur of the moment thought that I had. And so I popped it in there before I took the photos. So super easy to do that if you have a fluorescent, whether it be a, a red or a rose or a magenta, you could just dab a little on top of your of your reds or purples that you have in there. And I'm coming back now with some of the Caran d'Ache and just adding some touches of pink and a few more touches of color there. Really happy with the brilliance of the color in this. I'm getting my blues together and I'm mixing a couple of blues here uh, blue gum and light thalo blue I believe but mixing a couple of blues <clears throat> my eggs were blue because of uh, the Robin's egg that I mentioned before 
but you can use any color if you want to put eggs in your nest. And you could do speckled eggs or larger eggs. Um, I was going with, with my inspiration here. So I'm just mixing up a little of these blues and adding a little white to it and using a wet brush to loosely make in uh, the, the shapes here. This is a filbert brush that I'm using to, uh, to paint these in. flipped my brush around to use the the tip of the brush on the handle to scrape in a little uh, a few markings on top of the eggs this just adds texture and creates um, a little a little rough detail so that I don't have these perfect uh, shapes smooth shapes on what is otherwise a very loose and um, unstructured nest. So I'm just scraping a bit, playing with that. Now adding a bit of titanium white to highlight these eggs and make them not so flat. Just lift them, lift them up a bit from the nest. Or not from the nest, but frighten them up a bit so that they stand out in the nest. Now I'm dabbing into uh, a little more of that nickel azo gold and just shading a bit around the eggs there in the center to ground them in the bottom of the, the nest there. And you could use your colors for this or pen. I just had a little of this paint left, so I'm using that that just creates that depth in the center. A little more of the Karen Dash. So I'm just tweaking now. Adding little bits of color. It's wonderful that as we're working on something like this, I can see these signs of spring all around my house. And if you're confined to your space, your house, wherever you are, uh, I hope that you can see some signs of spring too whether it be um, baby birds or nests or 
or whatever blooms and trees that you can see and that these bring you joy at what is a, a difficult time right now but we can make the most of it by looking around for these signs of hope. Adding a little bit of Karen Dash to the eggs to brighten them up with that uh, teal, teal blue, just having fun. Final little bits of color and then stop sooner than later <laughs> so that you finish up your piece. And I am so looking forward to seeing everyone's nests. Be sure to tag them with the Color the World 100 hashtag. I can see them all that way, whereas I miss them if they're not tagged. And I'm so looking forward. The artwork has been absolutely stunning from everyone. Until next time.